عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين Good to see you all and hope you are all safe inshallah in your homes I know we have fires raging fires all over the state but with paying sadaqah inshallah paying charity act of charity feeding helping those who are misfortunate and with Quranic du'as and recitations you will be protected inshallah inshallah ta'ala so I'm going to have a very brief introduction tonight because we have an honorable guest. And my introduction is on Surah Hud. You know, we are going through Surah Hud, alayhi salam, and we have reached verse 77. And this verse speaks about the community of Lut, the Sodomites, people of Sodom. And they have a special story. We will discuss it in the following weeks. It will take us about two weeks to speak about this story in Surah Hud. But as a prelude to this story, many people in the community, they ask, what is our stand on homosexuality? What does Islam say? Nowadays, you may find this trend in your school, in your neighborhood, sometimes in your families. Don't be surprised. I've been approached by Muslim parents who say that we have this problem in our families with our sons and daughters. So what do we say about this? What is Islam's stand on this? How do we deal with this? This is not something easy. I believe this is the most difficult task that we have, dealing with such conditions, with such state. The angels, they left the village of Ibrahim going to his nephew's village, Lut. Lut is also a messenger of God to tell Lut, to tell him to pack up, basically pack up and leave, but without his wife. They asked him, leave your wife behind. She is going to be afflicted with them, punished with them. And of course, Lut was a messenger who served <clears throat> Sodom. Sodom today is in Jordan between Jordan and Palestine, in that area. Sodom and Gomorrah, these were five villages. Sodom and the neighboring towns. So he was sent to them to ask them to worship God and to stop, to quit this inappropriate and ethical sexual behavior that they had. Approaching men, men approaching men. So he had this difficult task to go to a community, probably all of them, maybe most of them were practicing this, they call it the practice of sodomites today. To be polite, we put it this way, of Qawm Lut, the sodomites. And the way they fulfilled their desire with, with the same sex. And this story is not only in the Quran. This is a biblical story. Story that is mentioned also in the uh, book of Genesis. So he was faced with stiff resistance and mockery. Mockery. They made fun of him. We will discuss this in details when we come to these verses, interesting verses in Surah Hud. 
But going back to this question, how do we deal with this? Number one, my friends, in chapter 30, Surah to rum verse 30. So 30, 30, very easy to memorize. 30, 30. Allah says, فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ God basically says that I have a program the humanity, programmed them because I'm the creator. I have programmed my creature in a way that they behave in a certain way, in a human way, in an honorable way. فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا Fitra means the primordial nature of the human that has been set by God for the humanity which he originated mankind with it from day one. This programming started from day one and it is not going to end until the last day. He originated, he created the Mankind upon this primordial disposition or nature or a programming, if you will. There is no alteration to God's will, to God's programming, to God's path in this life. We cannot alter it. Especially the religious community. The first meaning of religion, my friends, is discipline. If there is no discipline in religion, religion is going to lose its meaning and its purpose. If you go to a school and that school does not have discipline, if you go to a company, a corporation, and they don't have discipline, if you go to the army and they don't have discipline, if you go to a society, they don't have discipline, a family that does not have discipline, they lose their meaning. So religion has a discipline. And we have to follow that discipline. We have to respect that discipline. This is something to be followed, to be respected. We should not follow our own desires. We should see what the commander says. We should follow what the commander gives to us, the orders that he gives to us. This is religion. This is number one. Number two, my friends, marriage always has been, always since the creation of Adam and Eve, it has been between a man and a woman. That's the natural way of doing it. And we have to follow the same thing. We cannot change that. Why? Because God introduced marriage for a reason. For an important reason. God says if you want to excel in this life. If you want to accomplish your goals in this life. If you want to have a safe journey in this life. Then you have to find a spouse, a partner, a friend. From the opposite gender. From the opposite sex. Not from the same sex. Because every one of us male or female, we have some special attributes which is not found in the others. Men, they have a special attributes, special character, special psychology, special emotions, special needs, which is not found in women. And women, they have special character, special attributes, special wealth, special potentials. That is not found in men. This is why we need each other. We integrate each other. When you put a man next to a woman, they integrate each other. They complete each other. It's a necessity. No matter how that man is powerful and influential and intelligent, he cannot continue his journey in this life without a female partner. No matter how intelligent and smart the female is, she cannot continue her journey in this life without being with a husband, with a man in her life. We need each other. We integrate each other. We complete each other. 
So it has to be between a man and a woman. This is the nature of this universe. This is the programming that God introduced to us. We cannot change it. We cannot play with it. We cannot. We cannot alter this. We cannot tamper with this. This is a rule that has been decided for us before our, before our physical creation, before we came into being in, in this life. God has predestined this for us, that you marry someone from the opposite gender. This topic, though, is very sensitive, especially in the West, and very controversial, too. And therefore, we have to approach it with sensitivity. We have to approach it with rationality. When we speak about homosexuality, whether you are a pro or against, do not be emotional. We should not be emotional. We should not be biased. We should not be angry. We should approach it with rationality and understanding and openness. And we should be very sensitive to this subject. Because consider the victim is one of your family, one of your children, one of your relatives, one of your cousins. How do you deal with that? If you find out someone in your family suffers from this, do you curse him? Do you send him to hellfire immediately? Or you try to understand him? You try to help him out? Yeah, you try to reach out to him or to her? You, had, you, you try to find a solution, a human solution. And here, my friends, we have to differentiate between two things. Number one, those who are homosexual, they are human beings. So we have to acknowledge their humanness. We have to acknowledge their contribution to their societies. Some of them, they have a great contribution to their societies. We should not neglect that or overlook that. And between the act of homosexuality, so when it comes to the first one, the people, we have to respect them. We cannot reject them. We cannot push them away from our societies, from our circles, from our, from our families. But when it comes to the second one, the act itself, we reject it. We don't condone that. It's a sin. It's a cardinal sin, not only in Islam, in all religions. It's a sin. God says, these are my boundaries. Respect my boundaries. Don't bring your desire, put your desire and your own understanding above my boundaries. So we differentiate between two things. We differentiate between those who are human. So we have to try to help them. Now, Sometimes we have been told that scientifically proven that there is no solution to this. They cannot change themselves. We've been told sometimes, if this is true, if this is really true, they cannot change themselves, then we have to find a solution, but we cannot condone their act. We separate between the human himself and his or her acts. The human we accept, we respect, but the acts we don't respect. We don't condone, we don't encourage, we don't tolerate. We don't tolerate the act. Because it's a crime, it's a sin. It goes against God's will, it goes against human behavior and human morality and human ethics. So we differentiate between the two. And some people ask me, many people ask me, what do you think, what does your religion say? What do you think personally? I say, those are human beings. Sometimes you are afflicted with poverty. Sometimes you are afflicted with loneliness. You are lonely in this life. Sometimes you are afflicted with a disease. Sometimes you are afflicted with a tyrant. Your country is ruled by a tyrant. This is an affliction and sometimes it's a sexual, specific sexual orientation. It's also an afflection. So we have to help, but we don't condone. We don't condone. And some people ask me, 
Would God send those people to paradise? I really don't know the answer. God would never tell anyone that who he is going to send to paradise and who is not going to send to paradise. We don't know. We are asked to follow God and his rules. Now it's up to him on that day to send all mankind to hellfire or, or to send all of them to paradise. This has nothing to do with us. This is not our decision. Maliki Yawmiddin. Allah is the controller of that day. The keys for paradise or hellfire is only in his hand. It's in nobody's hand. Only God's hand. But they should not practice that act. I say as long as they, they have only feelings but they don't practice it, maybe they're going to be saved. God knows. But they should not practice it because practicing that act is a sin. Is a sin. And a cardinal sin, not just a normal sin. So this is what we think, what I, my understanding of the Quran, my understanding of the Islamic tradition. But again, I say that those people, we have to sympathize with them, not, not in terms of agreeing with them, no. Sympathy does not mean you agree with the person. Does not mean sometimes you sympathize with a criminal because he went in the wrong direction. Does not mean that you condone his criminality, his acts. But we have to consider them a human being so we can bring them, probably we can bring them back to God, inshallah. So 